Okay, I hope uh, everyone can see me here, although I'm not going to be up on stage. But uh, as we were waiting for others to come in this room, so let's just um, start. So, uh, hello everyone, how uh, are <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just heard a common greetings in our language, which means, um, how are you? So, uh, I hope you all are having a fantastic time so far. And uh, we appreciate you take time to join us here today at the first ever uh, World Cup Taipei. And kudos to our organizers and staff for making this event uh, possible. So if you are up this uh, afternoon to learn a few engineering practices as you build the websites, then you are perfectly in the right room. But before I dive into my topics this afternoon, I'd like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Joel Pitangol. Uh, I am a senior web engineer at a fully distributed company called Tena. That's the first logo, right, to your left. Um, and then I help uh, organize meetups in our community of WordPress users back in my hometown in Davao and in several cities in the Philippines. Also, I've been uh, partly involved with a global community team of the open source uh, WordPress project. Speaking of uh, open source, the web as we know it is open. What it means by open is uh, it's free. Similar with web, WordPress is an open platform. It is considered as one of the tools that is very easy to learn no matter how beginner you think you are in the web development space. WordPress powers 31% of all the websites you see in the internet. We are all part of the CMS that dominates the web. And uh, part, as well as part of a greater community, look at the people here in the room in this event and outside and across the globe. Sucuri, a uh, platform that focuses on website security, reported that the highest numbers of infected websites are actually on the WordPress, followed by Joomla, then Magento. In their 2017 uh, hack website report, roughly around 83% of all the websites are on, or of all the infected websites are on the WordPress. But the reality is, and I quote, the compromises that which were analyzed had little to do with the core of the CMS application itself, but it is more on the improper deployment configurations and the overall maintenance by, by the webmasters. The core or the packages that come to the CMS it's actually just your canvas, especially in the WordPress. You as webmasters and web developers will ultimately engineer the sites and make them better for the best experience of your intended users. Who among here have just started their uh, WordPress journey? Like, just started? Come on, no. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Welcome to WordPress. Um, <laughs> It is a common scenario that as you jump into an unknown or unfamiliar platform, uh, for example, if you're new to creating uh, WordPress or sites with WordPress, we take examples and inspirations online. Uh, also because we'd like to get things done quickly, aka the shortcut method. Sadly, these are not following the standard practices. They may solve your specific problem, but are poorly executed, which you will likely encounter on um, critical issues along the way. Look at careers that go through boards and license exams. Do you know why it's important to hire licensed engineers when constructing a building? You might have guessed the answer, but simply because it is, uh, they do have the required knowledge and background of the standard practices when it comes to making a quality and safe foundation. Although in the web, you don't need to, to be licensed. Uh, okay, I was thinking, I don't know, okay, that's fine. So although in the web, you don't need to be licensed, but through attending events such as like this, and mixed with a good amount of experience, 
you are gradually acquiring the necessary knowledge that is actually similar to a licensed uh, practitioner. Today, we go through some key practices uh, as we try to engineer our next website, maybe for a company, for someone, or even for personal use. All right, let's dive right in. So as cliche as it may sound, it is very essential to keep the web safe. As an engineer or webmaster, we ought to take security seriously. Since the web is uh, free, there are also some people that are free to use the web for their nefarious activities. Without some preventive measures on your site, they are going to be the easy prey of these hackers and their nefarious activities on your site. The common but often neglected way, here you go, the often neglected way of uh, securing or hardening your WordPress site is to ensure that you sanitize the inputs. These are the data that you take in from the users and escape outputs, which are the data you display back to your client or to the user's browsers. WordPress itself provides several APIs to help harden the security of your sites. Most commonly uh, used among them is we have sanitized text fields, uh, very popular for sanitizing input text fields. Uh, we have sanitized key and sanitized emails among a bunch of other helpers. For escaping outputs, we have a rule of thumb to late escape everything. There are a bunch of helpful functions that start with ESC underscore, such as the all-time favorite escape underscore HTML, for your regular uh, regular escaping HTML needs. Um, so it's going to strip off the special characters before it outputs to the browser. These, uh, and then uh, we have a escape URL for URLs, and then escape HTTR for uh, escaping uh, data that you'd like to show in the elements or tags. Here's an example. Uh, all right, so here's an example use case, very simple use case. It is trying to store, in the above example, it is trying to store a non-data from, non-static data from the global post variable sanitized by sanitized text field highlighted. And the other one below is that we are trying to display a metadata to the browser escaped by an escape HTML. So if you get stuck, and, uh, or if you, have, if you wanted to check if there's an API for your particular case, uh, make sure to check out and review these helpers in our WordPress uh, codex or the developer resources page. It's always, actually it's always been there. Um, and uh, this is brought to us by our amazing uh, documentation team in the community. Okay, so when it comes to dealing um, form submissions, and uh, preventing CSRF, or the cross-site uh, request forgery. There's another security uh, layer in WordPress that, uh, that is called nonce. In WordPress, nonce is a cryptographic token tied into specific action, uh, user, and window of time of the request. Two main request API, uh, sorry, two main WordPress APIs that you would need here the WP nonce field and the WP verify nonce. So the WP nonce field is, uh, only takes, it, uh, takes in the action name and an optional input field name, while the WP verify nonce below, the example below, is going to validate the requested actions. So if it checks out, then it goes through the process. If not, it's just going to skip the whole process. Another factor to making your site prone to attacks is when you have too many plugins. Note that uh, with plugins, you are at the mercy of the plugin authors. So whether they code uh, their plugin with security in mind or not may be out of your control. But indeed, plugin is uh, something that's very vital in the WordPress e ecosystem, especially when you're launching sites on time and on budget. So only install uh, plugins that are actually necessary and use your best judgment whether it is efficient to just custom code 
or bring in another plugin. A good measure as well is to keep a list of plugins that you or your colleague or a company have already reviewed and approved. Also, lastly, I could not stress out for everyone to always on the latest and greatest version of your plugins, especially the core of your WordPress. Form of attacks are evolving. Updates, especially uh, uh, security releases and maintenance re releases, are made, are made available to patch vulnerabilities and uh, remediate bugs. Well, you are not alone in this battle. Don't worry about that. Among, among a bunch of uh, tools out there, one that sticks out to, to me to help us develop a more secure website is this tool called PHP Code Sniffer. Who already, who already uh, who heard uh, about PHP Code Sniffer? Or who already used uh, code, code, PHP Code Sniffer here in the room? I know one. Who, who else? Okay, great. So uh, PHP Code Sniffer helps detect uh, violations of a defined set of coding standards, which brings us to the WordPress coding standards rule sets. So how do I play this? I just, maybe I'll just click it. Okay, there you go. So the WordPress uh, coding standards contains rule sets to, uh, it's still typing, so that's the command for the PHP CS. So the WordPress coding standard contains rule sets to validate code developed particularly with WordPress such as escaping before outputting non-static data and adding non-suggestions. All right, let's look at the performance of our WordPress website. Your website or a client site may run smoothly on a few visits. But what if you are building for an enterprise level site or sites that get thousands or millions of visits a day? Well, there are a number of strategies and best practices that we must employ as engineers to ensure that the code is optimized for high traffic situations. The most common among the practices is to add a layer of caching. Caching is uh, the act of storing computer data somewhere much accessible for later use. This could likely be a in a memory on your server uh, because uh, it is uh, way more faster to retrieve data from that um, storage or from that area. In WordPress, object cache is the main uh, API for caching data. It is not persistent by default, but with the use of uh, technologies like Memcache or Red, uh, Red, uh, Redis, uh, you can do so. Transcends, uh, Transcends API, on the other hand, is another simple uh, caching API available in WordPress. It allows you to store data in the options table of your database. So transcends a, and then, uh, but be mindful of using these uh, transcends a transcends API. Right. Be mindful of uh, using the trans transcends API because uh, it it easily gets the size of your uh, options table, and you could it easily get uh, out of hand. When it comes to performance, it is one of our roles to assess which data you only need for the current request. So for every WP query instance, uh, by default, it, has, it runs several queries. But most of the time, you wouldn't need those extra queries, for example, like uh, pagination or updating term meta caches. In those cases, so yeah, so in those cases, there are some arguments that you can set to basically bypass a few executions, such, such as uh, the setting, such as setting no found rows to true, that's going to skip the query for calculating pagination, and then uh, the update post meta cache and update post term cache, 
we're going to skip, uh, if you're going to set that to false, it's going to skip the, uh, the execution for finding uh, meta and third caches. So when is the best time to cache data? As much as possible, you should cache, uh, you should cache it, but it's a must cases uh, for, so must cases as when we are trying to generate expensive uh, database queries, and uh, also when we are doing remote or third party requests. Here's an illustration of what, it, what a huge difference uh, it makes when you have a node of a site with a node cache and the object cache. So notice that uh, the number of select queries and the overall database query time drastically dropped uh, with the object cache in place. Another aspect of the web bearing its openness, uh, openness philosophy is its capability to be served o over different mediums, as well as accounting for people uh, with different ways of consuming the web. Web accessibility is the practice of uh, making your website usable to, uh, by as many people as possible. We commonly uh, associate accessibility with disabilities, where in fact, it benefits uh, other groups, such as those on mobile devices, as well as those with slow networks. Accessibility begins in writing clean and semantic markup. This practice allows elements with a clearly defined meaning to both the browser and to your developers. Elements like header, nav, um, footer, or article uh, do a much better job in explaining uh, the content that is contained within the element than just using spans or divs. But I know sometimes uh, making complex UI controls that involve unsemantic uh, HTML and dynamic JavaScript updated content can be quite uh, difficult, especially now that in the right, especially uh, now that we have this um, single page application and or app like websites trends. So this is the this is the very reason they created this um, area or the accessible reach internet applications. Area or area, area, A-R-I-A is a technology that uh, can help with such problems by adding in further semantics or set of attributes to your web content that essentially browsers and assistive technology can recognize and use to let users know what's going on. Citing some examples, here's a very popular like uh, area hidden state, which is uh, very common, uh, and also which is used to hide the elements uh, to assisted 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 technologies. Um, you might want to consider hiding elements from them, which are uh, used purely for formatting and contain no real content. Landmarks are are used to aid uh, the understanding of content structure of your users uh, of users through the use of uh, role attributes. For example, role is equal to banner and you attach that to your uh, element or uh, tag. It's no secret that uh, responsive, web, responsive web design is one practice to make your site accessible in, uh, in whatever, uh, whatever device your users may be coming from. That includes uh, mobile responsiveness. The mobile uh, first design gained tremendous attention when reports showed more and more people are using their, their mobile phones when consuming the web. Google embraced this uh, new era and started rolling out this, uh, this new uh, search engine algorithm to enable mobile first indexing. This means uh, it will use uh, the mobile uh, version of your site for indexing and a ranking on search results. There are a whole bunch of tools as well that will support you in your uh, journey to making your site accessible. 
I personally use uh, Chrome Lighthouse for this and for other purposes like uh, site audit and a whole bunch of others like the P accessibility for terminal CI developers or co co accessibility or Kowali. There's also a library with a, a collection of components uh, from Tena, built with simplicity and security in mind, wherein you uh, simplicity and accessibility in mind, wherein you can also use this to leverage in your um, personal or client projects. One thing you can uh, differentiate a well-engineered uh, site from the rest is it is built with maintainability in mind. It may sound like a waste of time, but a simple proper indentation, uh, doc block in every function or class, in, uh, and inline commenting would make a huge uh, difference to other developers who you are collaborating with in your project. This offers even a huge amount of value when you are creating uh, a distributed web uh, projects or applications. Writing a uh, readable code isn't, isn't that, it's not actually a bottleneck on your workflow. It will rather speed up the development time when other engineers on board with your project or when the project transitions to another team or developers. And really, practices are fairly simple, like the use of tabs over spaces or keeping your markup to position nicely with PHP blocks. In your editor, in the editor of your choice, you can look into integrating a PHP code snipper uh, with the WordPress coding standards to help validate the syntax of your code as you write them. It could flag errors of using spaces instead of tabs um, and the structure of your blocks and among others. Readable code and the rest of these practices are being in place to encourage and empower collaboration. Again, uh, you can find many great resources in our codex. Head over to wordpress.org, uh, coding standards, or better yet, visit developer.wordpress.org for handbooks and guidelines about making things and plugins with WordPress. Again, I'd like to thank our documentation team in the community for uh, coming up and uh, working on with this um, docs. There's also an exhaustive list of uh, best practices cu curated by Tana, with the help of different contributors, uh, contributions from our community. This is an open, uh, this is an open source uh, project, so everyone can 100% contribute to this project. So as you can see, this um, oh, might not see, but uh, there's a whole bunch of best practices here, uh, covering from the markup down to JavaScript tools and your project structure. I can also share my slides later. Uh, and then, so knowing all of these basic practices, you can apply them as you work towards making a performant site. This is one way you show to your visitor how much you value their time. A secured site means they are safe with you and you are someone worthy of their trust. As the web welcomes everyone, so should your site by making it friendly to different users regardless of their capacity to use the web. And lastly, as you work towards making a web a uh, better place, everyone has a role to take part in keeping uh, the web accessible and safe. So be, collabor be open and uh, be collaborative. Okay, thanks everyone. Q&A time. I have a question. Okay. Andrew, great talk. Uh, Thanks. 
I'm not too familiar. Uh, PHP code sniffer. Can you tell us if that uh, all it does is uh, best practices for security? Is that what it looks for, or is it also a style guide for uh, keeping your code readable? So yeah. So there's a well, first question is about PHP code sniffer, and then the second question is there's a style guide for to make your code readable, right? Oh well, no, the question is. It's all, all of us code does, sniffer. Does code sniffer do both of those things? Like, it, does it watch out for the style of the code Got and it. security? Got it. Okay. So, um, not out of the box. So, code sniffer, PHP code sniffer, comes with a standard um, PSR um, uh, uh, rule set, and then there's a uh, you can ex there's a uh, WordPress coding standards rule set that you have to set when you're trying to uh, apply or uh, we're trying to validate um, your uh, WordPress sites with the standard against the uh, best practices of the WordPress coding standards. So, so basically, out of the box, PHP code sniffer doesn't come with uh, like uh, if if you violate the spaces or tabbing, right? So it doesn't come out of the backlog, but it comes with the WordPress coding st uh, standard uh, rule sets. So th these two are separate projects. So you can check uh, PHP code sniffer first. You have to install that first, and then go check out uh, WordPress coding standards, uh, coding standards uh, rule sets as well. Uh, it's an open source project, so you can search that. There's a GitHub repository for that. So the WordPress coding standards will check those um, violations uh, for, for like the formatting and uh, the nonce, um, missing nonce and all of that. I hope that answers your questions. But if not, we can talk outside. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, does anyone have questions to drop? Um, question, we have a lot of time. Like, I finished around 26 minutes, so I'd be happy to answer any questions. Anyone? Maybe my age or... <laughs> 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 Um, next question. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be nice. Um, so, so the, the coding standards, PHP sniffer, let's say PHP CBF, or whatever else it could use, right? They are very enterprise level tools, I feel. Um, why would a small agency or freelancer uh, want to use it? Yeah. Why would small agency and freelancers would want to use it? Yeah, I mean, uh, the projects have ranged for a two thousand dollar website to what five thousand dollars, and trying to get all these tools set up and then making it standard for a website they might just pick once and never look at it again. What's the benefit of doing it? Yeah, for these people. So, so what's it for them? Is exactly. that the, the, the gist of the question? Right? Yeah, for the small, small, for the small businesses, right? Yeah, it's a lot of work. Um, so what's the advantage? Right, there? right. Actually, I'm not sure if it's a lot of work because all these uh, projects we're doing, they're trying to streamline the installation of these projects. So um, I'm not sure, but the way I install it personally or in my project, um, so it's just as easy as uh, pulling down the repository and then a few steps. Although it, yeah, it, it's going to take additional steps on your setup or on your workflow, but um, considering that you are just a freelancer, I mean. I mean, don't uh, even if you're just a freelancer, or a small business, it doesn't mean uh, you don't uh, comply with standards or best practices, right? So I think it's 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 uh, it's, it's, uh, it's it's like for everyone. Uh, it's like for everyone. It's not just for enterprise level of uh, sites. It's also uh, for the small sites or for those who'd like to be able to to build a personal site out there. But at the same time. Uh, doesn't want to like pollute the web with insecure or uh, add more of the percentage, the number of insecure or infected websites, especially in WordPress. So um, I hope the answer is done. But uh, yeah, can, can, can I ask one more question? So <laughs> yeah. how does the uh, usage of coding standards actually help one get onto the WordPress uh, theme repository? Yeah. Does it help? In any way. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the question again? So, uh, you know, I'm, if I'm a budding theme developer and I want to get my theme into the WordPress theme repository, 
Uh, do I have to adhere to the WordPress coding standards? So I, I have not submitted a theme to the team uh, to the team repository in WordPress yet, but we have a team reviewers, right? We have a team reviewers in the in the community. They will review and they will check against the, the code in your theme, and if they checks out and um, also, yeah, so also they're going to check that against the WordPress uh, coding standards. So, so yeah, that's the benefit as well. If you're, if you're going to contribute to the theme uh, of the WordPress, uh, it means you also have the chance or opportunity to experience how it is to code uh, with standard and best practices in mind. So it's also a perfect uh, training ground as well for you. Uh, many more questions. Any more questions? Oh, there is a silent crowd. But uh, I hope that means you enjoyed my talk. Thank you so much, everyone. See you around. But uh, actually, um, oh, very fun thing I could always remember is maybe doing karaoke. Is who who, do, who doesn't love karaoke? <laughs> oh no, come on! <laughs> but yeah, um, I I'm always looking forward for the after party whenever I attend the word count. Uh, I, I encourage everyone to join because there's a whole level of connection when you meet people without being constrained in this hall or in this room. After party venue is a it's a different atmosphere, but well, maybe just for me. So uh, you can try it out for yourself, and it feels like you're more comfortable talking to people. And uh, in the after party, you actually get to talk to more people, speakers, volunteers, uh, sponsors as well. That's where you get. That's where you have the courage to talk to them with a little bit of help of the alcohol. So, so, um, and uh, I hope that answers the question. So. Do, do we have alcohol today? <laughs> <laughs> <After party. laughs> no, just kidding. But uh, after party is also about food. So I, yeah, food and then um, and then uh, good stories and then you can you can get to know other people on a maybe personal level and then uh, get their cards and all. So so yeah. Just FYI, we have pizzas. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, welcome everyone to stay after 4.30 for our But I, I don't know where the party is. It's here. Yeah, so just, just outside of this room because you can uh, like, have food and drink in this room, but we will do that at the other two rooms. Yeah. yeah. So it, the work camp is a very casual um, conference, so so after party is an even more uh, casual, uh, informal uh, like gathering, so that's it. But, but we don't have alcohol. Oh, it's fine. So, I mean, so I mean, we're looking have... for beer sponsorship maybe for next year. We can always have uh, we can always have a good conversation uh, with or without alcohol. So um, as long as uh, we are in the in a different atmosphere and maybe uh, yeah, food and uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, 